earlier about skin care, skin and nail care. That's all part of our program and quite often if patients don't use their own high quality lotion, I may put lotion on them before I bandage. So again, skin care is all part of the program. So I'm going to stop the video here a little bit early to talk about this sort of section. Um, anybody who's been around my channel uh, very much uh, and has heard me uh, talk about my condition, you'll have heard me talk about this, how important uh, skin care is even today. Uh, after I've gone through the physical therapy and everything, um, I have to be very cognizant of skin care always with my condition, uh, using a good high quality lotion, uh, making sure that no uh, skin breakdown occurs underneath the garments that I still have to wear. Um, and it's, it's, it's very important in this process, especially because you're going to be wrapped all the time. Uh, you really don't get uh, a time where you're not wrapped uh, during this process for the most part. You pretty much come into the office, you get wrapped, you go home, and then you come back and they unwrap you and then rewrap you again right there in the office um she talks about the patient lotioning their leg themselves at home uh the clinic that i went to they always did it with me there at the clinic always made sure everything was lotioned they would walk wipe down your leg with a you know a little bit of soap on a rag and kind of like clean you a little bit um to make sure that you know you had a you know a, a decent like skin care routine because as I say, you you didn't really get to take the garments or the uh, the wrappings off uh, after you you went home. You know they they wanted it to be on you as close to twenty four seven as possible. In fact, twenty four seven would be the ideal that you would only have the wrapping off a very brief time in the office, and then they would immediately rewrap you. Um, that is where they sort of try to focus for the absolute best results um, because every. Every every moment that you don't have the wrappings on, your your leg is already starting to swell again, um, and that's still the case with the garments that I have to wear uh, every single day. If I leave them off, my leg will start to swell again. Um, so I only take them off during brief periods of time, either when I'm in bed or I'm taking a shower. In which case, the skin skin uh, care routine absolutely vital to making sure that you don't encounter more problems and thus put yourself in a position where you may have to not wear your garments because they're painful or wearing them becomes more painful due to a skin breakdown sort of situation. So this is, this is absolutely vital. Lymphedema dries out the skin and the bandages dry out the skin. So import this, keep the skin well hydrated. I ask patients to put the lotion on before they see me, but that doesn't always work out. So I have my lotion here. So once this, this lotion is absorbed into the skin, well, I'm ready to put the stocking on. So I'm going to show you how to do a half leg bandage as well as a full leg bandage. Okay, I'm going to have you pull that up for me. Good. Now one thing I want to note during this part with the stocking you'll notice that there's a lot of time and effort focused on making sure that this this whole stocking is is very smooth that there's not any folds or there's not any uh, wrinkles and stuff like that in it and this will this will be a trend that will continue throughout the whole wrapping process is making sure that everything lays as evenly and as smoothly as possible um, and the reasons for this are you know maybe not as obvious uh, as you would as they should be because i mean you think about it you don't want to have some sort of fold or crease in this that you're then going to have more and more layers of compression wrapped over it and then that's going to be stuck on your leg for the next 
roughly at least 24 hours, most likely, at the, at the, at the bare minimum, right? Until you come back the next day to, to, to do the wrapping again. So this is another part of, of sort of the skincare routine that can't be overlooked. Um, the everything has to has to go on as smoothly uh, and wrinkle free as possible, uh, including this this uh, stocking and then the wraps and everything that are going to come underneath it, uh, over 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 above it, I should say. It's very important uh, the, that this all go on the way that it does, and you know she she'll straighten this out and make sure all that stuff is, is very smooth. And you'll see that the patient here, who's probably been through this wrapping uh, several times before, you know, is, is making that effort to make sure the stockings all the way pulled up and it's, it's smoothed out and everything. Uh, this, this is pretty important. And, and just sort of like one of those things that you might miss and not fully grasp the significance of. So I just kind of wanted to point that out real quickly. minimize the wrinkles as much as you can. All right, so first are the toes. Sometimes I bandage the little toe, uh, sometimes I don't. It just really depends on the length of the little toe. So we start out by anchoring the toe bandage around the ball of the foot. Her toe is pretty small, so we're going to leave it open. From there, each toe is bandaged individually. You're going to bandage the end of the toe first, and then the base of the toe. You really need to make sure that you don't have any rolling of the bandages in the web space, because it can be irritating to the skin. So, a couple times around the bandage, you'll down and under the foot, and then you come to the next bandage. So the end of the toe, and then the base of the toe, smoothing out the bandage every time. And then we go down and under the foot, and then to the next toe. You really have to be fairly careful when you bandage toes, particularly if there is a diabetic problem. Sure, that's down in there and back down and under the foot, and then the big toe. So with her, her foot isn't swollen, and I've only bandaged four toes, so there's quite a bit of toe bandage left over. Sometimes I will just increase the compression at the top of the foot. So I'm going to talk here a little bit about this as well. This is this is really one of the my least favorite parts, uh, maybe even my least favorite part of the entire wrapping and compression process that I had to go through. Um, I did not like having my toes wrapped. It's not very comfortable. It doesn't feel very good. It feels very weird, um, especially at least to me it did. Uh, and I also have extremely ticklish feet. Uh, I'm extremely ticklish, so this was this was always a bit of a struggle for me. Uh, for sure. Uh, and, and unlike what she says here in this video, you know, obviously you can see here that the, the girl in the video, she doesn't have a very swollen foot. Uh, I did. I had a very swollen foot. I needed this, this whole wrapping uh, of the foot process to be extra thorough um, because not only was my foot swollen, uh, my, my top of my foot was significantly swollen and had been swollen for so long and that extra lymph fluid collected in there for so long that it was very difficult to get it out. It was a very stubborn process. Uh, so they not only had to do all this toe wrapping and everything on me, but they also had to include uh, some extra wrapping and effort, uh, in particular with these things they call chit bags, which are like little bags that they would sew uh, there in the office there where they would cut up like a bunch of pieces of uh, like somewhat hard styrofoam and put it into like a little kind of a, a pouch that they would then place over the top of my foot and then wrap that gauze and stuff around it and the gar the bandages and stuff around it um, to, to put like kind of a pressure on it 
uh, because it was it was just it was so hard. It was almost like um, it was almost sort of like a a semi uh, sort of like I don't know like semi like gelatin sort of consistency or something like that. It it was a bit hard because it it had been in there for so long and the skin had been uh, stretched obviously by that excess fluid having collected in there. Um, it wasn't quite as simple uh, as just putting a couple of uh, ace wraps around it to get that out of there. It took a lot of effort to focus on that area in particular. Um, and even still today, uh, one of the best things to helping maintain that and make sure it doesn't come back again and start swelling again, uh, like it did before, is just to wear a good pair of tennis shoes with laces and lace it up real tight. That way the shoe helps to add that compression onto the top of the foot. Um, because that is an, an area that will, much like the rest of the leg, re-swell and cause issues when you try to, you know, wear shoes or, or sometimes even socks, depending on, you know, how tight your socks are and stuff like that. Um, but th th this was one of my least favorite things to have to deal with when it came to the wrapping. I didn't like the toe wraps. Uh, it it kind of sucked. <laughs> by wrapping the toe bandage around the foot, and that's what we're gonna do today, just to use up the toe bandage. Tuck the toe bandage in. Bring the stockinette back down. And then we're gonna use rolled foam. Rolled foam starts at the foot, base of the toes, and it'll end below the knee. The rolled foam is not put on tightly, so you go once around the foot, you're going to go right straight into the ankle and you're going to overlap about halfway, halfway with her at least, it depends on the size of the leg, until you get to the knee area. So I do use a clip. I clip this down where it's doubled to secure that in place. All right, so I have all of my bandages already lined up in the order I'm gonna put them on. The first four go below the knee and then the next three go from the knee above. So this is a six centimeter width bandage and we're gonna start by going once around the bottom of the foot. Now quite often I'll go twice, sometimes three times. You just have to listen to your therapist because they will tell you how many times they want you to bandage around the ball of the foot. Uh, for the bandaging video today, we're gonna go twice around with about 25% pull each time. So that's two times around. You can count your layers. So as you can kind of see here, you know, it starts with the initial layer of some gauze and the sock and then you put on a foam layer and then you kind of come over it with these ace wraps and these are these are special sort of ace wrap with more compression and less um less elasticity to them um and she hits on an important point there where she talks about about 20 percent pull um this was one of the things that was difficult in the beginning when uh i got into the wrapping because um, my insurance was not very good and insurance in general doesn't cover very much of lymphedema, uh, treatment right now. Um, it's a very underserved condition and it's a very mis, not just misunderstood, but not understood at all condition, even amongst doctors at this point. Um, so insurance didn't really cover much. Uh, of my treatment needs and therefore I was put into this position where I couldn't see the therapist as often as they wanted to see me um, so my dad had to actually learn how to how to do all this he had to learn how to wrap me he had to become something of an amateur uh, lymphedema therapist uh, in his own right because he had to learn how to do all this wrapping and one of the tougher things that we struggled with in the beginning was was the tightness factor because the, the instinct is to wrap it fairly tight because you're thinking compression, we want tight. You know, these, these two concepts kind of go together. The tighter, the better, even perhaps. But that's not really what you want. You, you want it to be snug, but not to be cutting off flow 
because that's the opposite of what you want. You don't want to in prohibit the flow. You want to direct the flow. You want to you want to push it up and out of the leg because that's the way the the lymphatic system flows. It all flows up towards your neck and empties back out into the rest of your body. So you don't want to restrict flow. You want to encourage it. Um, and that's where this uh, sort of how much tightness do you need to apply concept really comes in. Uh, she talks about like 20%. Um, but it's going to vary person to person, obviously, and, and their unique sort of, you know, position, but it was, it just, I just wanted to like, kind of note that a little bit as one of those, those interesting things that also can get overlooked and how important it is in this process is, is just how tight you're wrapping it, uh, because too tight will be uncomfortable and, and prohibit the flow for sure. So you gotta be, you gotta be a little bit careful about it. After that, you're going to go back behind the heel, straight up the side of the foot and over the top. So I call this figure eight patterns. Again, it might be one figure eight, it could be two figure eights and occasionally three figure eights. Today we're gonna to do two figure eights. So I'm gonna stop the video here briefly too to comment on something here that's uh, kind of a fun memory. Um, this was one of the harder parts that we struggled with uh, between me and my dad. Uh, was learning how to wrap the heel of the foot. Um, it's obviously sort of an awkward spot to try to get wrapping and compression around. Uh, since it's a a ball, it's sort of a semi-round object, the ball of your foot. Um, so learning how to get these wraps to lay properly and to come across off the foot, around the heel, in the ball of the foot, uh, and, to, and to just have all these little systems sort of like integrate together as you're as you're moving through this particular transition from the top of the foot to the calf area was 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 definitely a bit of a, a bit of a brain scratcher for a while it was one my dad struggled with quite a bit and it's one of those things that we look back on and and we kind of laugh about now it's like you remember how difficult wrapping the ball of the foot was like you know because we had to sort of learn this stuff together and and really become very familiar with all this stuff and that was that was one of the that was one of the fun little parts that that vexed him for a while and it was it was kind of a, a fun time looking back on it now after we had uh, gone through it and everything then we're gonna go underneath the arch i have all this bandage left over and we're gonna just start up the leg we're gonna overlap this halfway we're gonna keep about 25 percent pull on the bandage and we're gonna tuck the corner right in that's the first bandage. Second bandage, eight centimeter width. Okay, second bandage starts at the ankle, once around the ankle. So I refer to this bandage as the HAS bandage, sometimes it's the HASH bandage, but those acronyms would stand for heel. So diagonally catch the heel, that's the H. A is the ankle, S is the sole of the foot, and again, sometimes I'll go back and catch the heel again, sometimes I go up the foot, or up the leg. So today I did heel, ankle, sole, heel. I have this left over, overlap halfway, keep 25% pull on it, sometimes it's 50% pull. Up the leg, you you tuck that corner in. So that is your second bandage. Third bandage is a 10 centimeter width. You can find out or figure out where you start this by feeling up the bandage and where there's a drop off in compression is where I'm going to start my third bandage in a reverse direction. It's usually about two inches above the ankle bones and we're going to reverse the direction and we're going to end up here. I like to smooth the bandage out as much as possible, try to minimize the wrinkles, keep the amount of overlap consistent all the way up. And then we're gonna tuck this in. Or 
if I'm just doing a half leg bandage at this point in time I may tape it. Patient may be done so I'm going to tape this to secure it before I put her in standing to finish the bandage. But for many patients, this would be the bandage that they receive. Okay. All right, so I'm going to pause it here because we're about to transition into the, the standing part of it. Um, and we're going to kind of skim through this part uh, here at the end to show a couple of things. But that's majority of, of what I wanted to show in this particular video. Um, as you can kind of see, the process here is, is uh, pretty much complete below the knee. And then they're going to repeat this process above the knee. Um, but, you know, you can see that it's a fairly complicated process. There's a, there's a lot of moving parts involved. There's a lot of different layers. There's a lot of technique. Um, and, and this is on a, a relatively easy leg to wrap. Um, <clears throat> I don't even know for sure if this patient has lymphedema or whether they're just sort of like acting as a, as a model for the process. Um, because mine was significantly worse. You know, my, as I showed in the pictures earlier, my leg was up in that stage three range where there was significantly more swelling. So there was a lot of more things that, that had to be included in this process. Like for example, uh, my leg was so swollen that the, the transition from the calf to the heel of the foot, particularly on the backside here, um, there was a significant sort of like fold of skin here at the back of the ankle because my leg was so swollen it caused you know this sort of overlapping between calf and uh ankle and and heel of the foot um so uh, in order to sort of build up these areas and make sure that these wraps didn't sort of fall into these little you know sort of gaps and didn't roll up and 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 flip over and become uh, distorted, um, you know, they had to add even more tools to the process. Like they would use uh, gauze or sometimes like a bit of cotton to fill in sort of areas to make the leg more symmetrical for the wrapping. Uh, they would add, uh, I think they used uh, chip bags on both sides of my ankle as well to help break down some of these problem areas uh, around this sort of whole ankle top of the foot sort of transitional area because these are our, our difficult areas to hit uh, very smoothly due to due to those just sort of dimensions you're having to work with here um, so I mean this was a relatively straightforward wrap and my wrap was in in a lot of ways even more complicated than this it had even more parts even more wrapping even more tools being employed due to the nature of how swollen my foot was um, but this is this is a good like just sort of basic under uh, understanding of the process of what you got to go through for the wrapping <clears throat> and like I say we're gonna hit on a little bit of the stuff in the uh, in the standing position here just real quick. So we have standing. Um, as I skim through an here real quick. To me. Okay, you can go um, a centimeter. So she's gonna stand up. Okay. You're gonna so see here the that they foam. they bring the uh, you know the sock all the way up obviously and this goes all the way up to the groin. Um, which, as I mentioned earlier, my thigh was was really one of my worst uh, areas that had to get wrapped. And it was also very, very difficult to wrap since it was, you know, I mean, the thigh is is a, you know, semi sort of spherical kind of area, even in the best of, of times. You know, we talked about the ball of the foot being uh, very rounded and stuff like that, and that made it difficult to wrap with well, a thigh. Uh, is also sort of a difficult one to wrap. You know, it's a very sort of fatty, uh, more soft-skinned area. And it, it, with my swelling and everything being as bad as it was, it was even more of a problem area. Um, I'm just going to keep skimming through here a little bit. You see, so, you know, again, we're doing up. the foam and everything. That's all pretty much the same. You start doing the ace wraps again, all the way up to the groin. Go all the way up, all the way up, all the way up. Coverage. You know, and as you can see here, I mean, it's basically just repeating of the process. But the thing that I, <laughs> I kind of want to note about all this is, you know, when you when you need to get wrapped all the way up to the groin like this, all the way up the leg, um, you know, you you um, you got to get very comfortable with your therapist, and your therapist has to get very comfortable with you. Um, they're going to be 
in all your most intimate kind of area here. Um, and they're trying to do it, obviously, as delicately as, as possible. Um, but you have to get very comfortable with each other because uh, this process is a very physical process. It's, it's a lot of touching. It's a lot of uh, getting into uh, areas that you normally wouldn't want somebody who's something of a stranger doing. Um, it, you have to you have to really uh, you know give yourself over to this process if you really want it to work uh, because these these types of things can't be overlooked. It's not just the wrapping and everything that goes into it. It's also things like this, you know, because these are things that can be difficult for people as well. You know, to let somebody else touch them, much less touch them this much. It's it's a lot, you know, and it shows not only from the patient's perspective of, of being comfortable, from, but from the therapist as well, like how much they put into it and, and how much work it takes to, to do this um, and to, to be willing to you know, to, to have to get in there like that, you know, to be in somebody's private area and have to um, wrap them all up like this and do this over and over and over again all day, every day. You know, it's, it's a lot of work. You know, James, my therapist would, you know, it wasn't uncommon for him to be, you know, have worked up a decent amount of sweat after having gone through this whole wrapping process. You know, it was very physical. Um, and he had pretty strong hands and arms as a result of, of how much he has to work physically uh, to do all this, um, it's a, it's a very intensive process, and and you know you see how you can kind of get an idea how much work it takes. Just like I say, on a relatively uh, simple leg like this one, on my leg, it's it's that much more magnified uh, with how much work it takes to get all the wrapping and everything done and have it be done correctly. You know, and and you know it's it's like having you know as you can imagine, this limits your your mobility quite a bit, you know, this is like having a, a, a moving cast on all the time. Uh, and in truth, you really don't want to move very much. You want to limit your mobility when you have it on, because the more you move, the more it's going to slide. And the more it slides, the more uncomfortable it's going to get. And there's, and it's going to slide a hundred percent because these, these wraps are going to do their job. They're going to squeeze this lymph fluid out of your leg and as the uh, dimensions of your leg decrease and change, this is all going to naturally sort of start to shift and move out of position and slide down all on its own. So you really don't want to help that process along very much, not only for the benefit of your treatment, but for your own uh, comfort, right? Because as these things begin to slide down, particularly above the knee, they're going to start to bunch up around your knee. You're going to have this sort of wad of... of uh, gauze and foam and ace wraps that begin to build up around your knee and it's going to even more so limit your mobility uh, and it's also going to be quite uncomfortable which is why they want to it's another reason they want to do the wrapping every single day because the 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 shape of your leg is literally going to be changing every single day uh, and this sliding is an unavoidable reality so they, they want to bring you back in and rewrap you every day for those kinds of reasons. Um, so this is really just, you know, it's a very involved process. You know, it's really the only way to say it. Very involved process takes a lot from the patient and the therapist to be done correctly uh, and to achieve the best results. Um, and not everybody is down for that. You know, I, I've talked to my therapist about it before. You know, and he's he's commented that I was uh, a very big success story for him uh, and continue to be a big success story for him because I was devoted to making this work, whereas not all patients are. You know, a lot of them will go through this and then they'll fall back on on the uh, the self-care routines they have to do on their own time and their condition will will go back to being how it was or they won't be very cooperative in the in-office stuff and it makes it difficult to get the wrapping and stuff done correctly, you know, or they won't show up to appointments or, or whatever that, whatever it may be. Um, it takes a lot from both therapist and patient to make this whole process work. Uh, and, you know, you go through this for months on end. For months on end, I was going in, getting wrapped and having to deal with wearing these wrappings. This, like I described it earlier, sort of a moving cast on my leg all the time. Uh, and it sucked. It sucked a lot. Um, but the results were, were worth it, ultimately. I mean, 
I went from not even being able to wear pants or shoes to being able to wear pants and shoes and, you know, you know, live something like a normal life again with the garments and everything. Uh, you know, it's still inconvenient. It's still uncomfortable. But at least, you know, I can I can function relatively well as a normal person with some limitations and discomforts and, and still, you know, sort of issues. But, you know, that that's kind of shows all the stuff for this video um, that I wanted to show. I think it's a very good video, very informative. Uh, and we're going to watch this other video here a little bit here in a second. That's much, much shorter. So this next video is much, much shorter, um, but I did I did want to show it because uh, it shows off a tool. Hold on there. It does show off a tool that I still use today, uh, and it's very useful. It's something that we, uh, we refer to as a reduction kit. Uh, it's, it's a nice uh, tool for supplemental care, um, but it, it can be a replacement, as uh, I've, I've been told by my therapist in the past, for all the wrapping and everything. Like You could just use this to treat uh, the lymphedema condition. Uh, but I, I, I'm not hundred percent sure on this, but I think it probably depends mostly on the level of severity of the condition. Uh, like if you had a relatively small leg, like the girl in the previous video where the, the swelling hasn't really gotten out of hand as of yet, I think this would probably be a fantastic tool for that. Uh, I think that, uh, my particular situation with how swollen and severe of a case I had, I don't think this would have been able to, to do the job. Um, but now that I've gone through the therapy and I've gone through the wrapping and I've done all the early stuff, uh, this definitely is something that is, is great to have. And it's something I use, uh, quite often. Uh, and it's just like really a short little video here about it that I just kind of wanted to show it, uh, as a, as another means of, of treating and also maintaining, uh, the swelling that, uh, results from lymphedema here. Align the circade juxtafit upper leg with knee just below the groin. The black side of the material should face the skin. Make sure that the lateral rise of the garment is positioned on the lateral side of the upper leg. Unroll the top two bands and loosely secure them far enough below the groin as to not to cause discomfort. This will anchor the legging in place and enable you to easily raise or lower the garment for correct positioning. Unroll the bottom two bands and secure the bottom band to the outside of the legging. Then, while holding the second band, unroll the next band. Secure the second band and continue this process with the other bands going up the leg. The garment should lay flat and wrinkle-free against the leg. Adjust each band to a firm and comfortable compression level. Ensure that the bands are placed in an alternating order. Once all bands are secured, inspect the garment for any gaps or creases. Adjust the bands as necessary. If present, make sure that the Velcro tabs are attached to the respective landing pads. That's just a, a very short little video there, but I wanted to show that because, uh, like I said, it is a tool I use uh, quite often and it works quite well. Um, kind of a funny further story about, uh, that particular, uh, device. You know, I talked about how my dad had to, to help out a lot with the wrapping and sort of the supplemental care of this process. Um, this, this is a, another kind of funny story because, uh, as you can see there, it has a lot of straps that, that overlap and they kind of, you know, crisscross to, to create that, uh, even compression across the leg. Uh, my dad never really could figure that thing out. <laughs> um, all the straps going back and forth and everything always kind of vexed his brain a little bit. He wasn't very good at uh, putting that one on. So I usually had to put that one on myself. Uh, but it was kind of a funny thing. You know, it was just like he would look at it and he'd be like, I have no idea what what all this is. You know, he just like he, he just wasn't quite uh, good at it. But um, it's, it's a great tool. Uh, works really well for adding some extra compression or even replacing uh, the garment temporarily if you're not able to uh, get it on or you're uh, running it through the laundry or something like that. Uh, works works nice as a nice supplemental tool. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of show that a little bit. 